Well, good morning. I'm Martin Tyner with the Southwest Wildlife Foundation. And of course, all of you know my, my beautiful friend here. This is Belle, the Harris Hawk. And this is going to be part, I believe, 11 of our beginning falconry uh, uh, bits that we've done for everybody. And so what we're going to talk about today is something that's, that's very, very important. It's called coping. Uh, it, is, it is the way to get the beak uh, the right shape because what happens in captivity is the birds don't always take good care of their beaks and keep them ground down to, to the, the proper shape. And so some birds, you know, you, you cope them every three months, which basically means file them down back into the appropriate shape. Some birds, uh, it's every six months. Some birds, like the little peregrine falcon that I've got right now, uh, she's been with me three years and I've never had to cope her beak. Uh, Belle, traditionally, we cope her beak and, 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 and trim her nails and sharpen her nails at the beginning of the falconry season, which is, which is September. And at the end of this falconry season, which we're at right now, we do it a second time. And, uh, if we find that the beak is, is getting a little too long or the talons are getting a little too long or she's hunting not being successful because they've the talons have dulled a little bit, then we get in and, and we fix these issues uh, at, a, at a later date. Uh, so with Bell here, it's usually every six months that we need to do this. Now, this terrifies a lot of falconers. They, they think this is, um, you know, they're not going to be able to do it right. And to be honest with you, it's, it's really quite simple. Uh, you don't need to take it to a vet. In fact, I don't recommend doing taking this to a veterinarian and have a veterinarian do it because, to be honest with you, most veterinarians are not skilled in doing this procedure. And, and uh, the worst thing is that uh, many veterinarians have a tendency that, that they basically anesthetize the bird to keep the bird quiet so that um, that they can do this without without damage to the bird. And anytime you put an animal in, under anesthesia, you're, you're taking a big risk. And so if you don't have to, uh, it makes the procedure so much safer. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to cast your bird so that the bird is, is contained and safe while you do this, this operation and, and the proper way to uh, cope the beak back down. Now, her talons don't need uh, to be worked on. They look great, but her beak is a little bit long. So we're going to have and get this taken care of. Okay, I've got my beautiful assistant here with me, and I'm going to hand her the bird. Now, not everybody really has an opportunity to uh, have someone as talented as Susan is when it comes to handling these birds. So I'm going to kind of, Susan could just reach up and take the bird, but I don't recommend that for the average person. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get control of the bird here, and then I'm going to hand it to Susan. The way you do that is I'm going to get down and hopefully into camera view. The way you do that is I get the feet right there. See how I got the feet? And then I bring her wings in, as you can see. I, I bring her wings in. Now I've got her, now she's kind of tucked in, and Susan reaches around and she automatically gets those feet because that's what you worry about. She keeps the wing tucked, and right now Bell is secure, Susan is safe, and we're ready to go as far as doing this. Now in most cases, this is just fine. For Susan and I, we can cope Bell's beak this way, we can trim her nails this way, and everything is perfectly safe. But we're going to go a step further, and I'm going to show you how to cast your bird. And the way you do that, let me bring this over here while Susan holds on to Bell. And the way that you do that is a nylon stocking. Do not steal one of your wife's good ones, she'll get mad at you. So just an old nylon stocking uh, that's got holes or worn out or whatever the issue is. And this we're going to sock the bird. But before we can do that, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a hole in the toe right here. Now what that does is it allows me to pull it all the way over the bird's head. And so the, so the head is, is clear. Here we go. Very simple. Now that's over the bird's head. There's my girl. Okay. It's okay, baby. Okay. 
And as you can see here, I want you to hold that up so people can see. Now you can see right there that um, Bell is, is socked, but her feet are still dangerous. And so what we want to do is we want to take a little bit of masking tape and we taper talons closed. Now, Bell doesn't need this. I'm just showing this to you so you have an idea about how this works. And so now that helps to keep her talons closed in so they can't come out. Her wings are held down so she can't flap her wings. She's very, very much contained right there. And that in that way, she's much safer to work with. Why don't you bring her over here a little bit? There we go. Now, a couple of things that I want you guys to think about here. Okay. Here's our little bell. Is I want you to, you can see right here. In fact, I'm going to see if I can see if that. There we go. We've got her beak magnified. You can see her beak's a little bit long. Now, how we do, do we know the beak is a little bit long? You know, she's still eating just fine. This is not a, a, a health issue. This is just it's a little bit long. And the way we know is I want you guys, you beginning falconers, I want you to take photographs of your brand new bird. And I want you to take nice close photographs of the shape of the beak. And what, what that will do for you, take a front view, take both side views. And what that will do for you is that will give you a reference. There we go. That will give you a nice reference point to be able to uh, know what the what the appropriate length of the beak is supposed to be so that you can uh, reshape it back to what it was originally. And so when you first get your, your bird of prey, please do that. You know, I know you're going to take a whole bunch of pictures anyway, but remember to take pictures of, the, of your bird's beak so that you know um, how long it, it is naturally and you want to try to duplicate this. Now, please understand, we're not looking... Um, uh, to, to create a piece of artwork. Uh, all we want to do is make sure that the beak is functional for your bird. And, and so we're going to go ahead and get started here. The tools that we use are files, just, just regular nail files, and a Dremel tool. And uh, grab that here. Now, unfortunately, my uh, my small Dremel tool uh, gave up the ghost uh, a week or so ago. So I've got my bigger Dremel tool, but it's just fine. It'll work all right with the bigger Dremel tool. Yeah, that's a great place to work. I would have brought my file home from work. Yeah, you, you can get them battery operated. You can get them like this one's a big <clears throat> electric one. and But it really, really doesn't matter all that much as long as you get... get uh, uh, a Dremel tool with a little sander on it, right there, um, to to take the beak down. And we're going to do this in little tiny bits. Now, you don't want to go too far. It's going to be a little noisy here because I've got the, the Dremel tool will be running. And, uh, in fact, go ahead and bring her cl up closer. There you go, right there, and I'll readjust. So we can see it better. It's a good girl. She's so patient. She really is. Okay. And what we're going to want to do is that length that we've got right here. We want to take that length off first. Now, if you if you go down too far, you're going to hit into uh, blood, into the blood vein. And so that's the last thing you want to do is go too far. But if you do it nice and slowly, and uh, then you'll be just fine. Uh, okay, and here we go. That's what that looks like. On camera here. Oh, that's good. This is fine. Now, as you, as you can see, 
which I think in just little tiny bits. It doesn't really hurt her other than it's annoying because it's a vibration. And we just watch where we're going. And I'll be honest with you, if, if you're nervous about doing this, less is more. So if you are nervous about bringing this down at all, you know, stop when you think you've gone far enough. Don't go too far. You're not going to uh, permanently injure your bird by doing this. Um, you're just like a, trimming the toenails on a, on a dog or something along those lines. Um, you know, it'll bleed a little bit, but it will, it, everything will grow back. Okay. Now we've got it down and you can obviously see there's a big flat spot here that, we, that we're working with. And so we need to taper both sides inward to a point. And so that's very, very, in, the next important thing is to taper it into a point. And uh, I'll do that here. Again, little bits. I'll hold it at, at an angle here. At a shallow angle so that we will get this to go inward just a little bit. And you watch, kind of remember this, what would be basically a center line so that you uh, take it sideways. And Belle is so sweet, she's so patient. Now we've got it coped into center, and as you can probably see now, it looks pretty darn close to right, but it is um, a little flat going from front to back, and that needs to be kind of more of a point. And this is where we start bringing the, in the files. With this? Yeah, we can move that out of the way. And now that we're down to this point, now we bring in the files. Your hands was hiding it, so I couldn't see much. Okay. There we go. And so, now that we've got that there, we want to get the back to that point because that point is how she uh, basically rips food, so it needs to be somewhat pointy. And you're such a good girl, Belle. And it usually has a bit more of a down curve. So this is where the kind of carving craftsmanship comes into it. And again, guys, this is not, doesn't have to be Perfect. It just has to be kind of the point that it gives her her ability to to rip meat properly. That's my pretty girl. Okay. And then this is a much finer file than the other one. Fingernail file. Of fi Fine one works really well for, and you want it to be nice and smooth. You don't want any any roughness or jagged edges because that's how things fray. There you go, sweetie. Okay. Get, get my finger under here. There we go. Okay. There we are. 
that's just about perfect right there straight there now something that you do need to think about is it it does not as as frequently but it does on the lower this is the upper mandible the lower mandible which is inside the mouth if that if it doesn't close properly if the lower mandible has grown and pushed against the upper mandible here and they're not able to close it properly then you need to open the beak and and you need to file that upper mandible back a little bit so that that it is in place where it needs to be um, but hers is is lined up just beautifully and I think we are so close to being done let's touch that just a little tiny bit more pretty Belle yes you are your beak looks beautiful now it is very important to, when you do this guys you need to understand that since these do grow and these do need to be trimmed, and if you don't trim them, um, they'll have uh, feeding problems. Also, if the beak is too long, uh, it, you run the risk of the beak breaking. If the talons are too long, you run the risk of the talons breaking and then causing a lot more issues. And so if you can do this regular little bit of maintenance that we've done right here, and that's just as nice as you could want, nice and smooth, it's straight. Um, there's a nice little point on the end of it, and that's just just exactly how you want want it to be. You know, this this is one of our our first little health tips to take care of these birds properly. Once you've got that all done, then I'm gonna take it right now from Susan. Why don't you go ahead and get to the camera? Dear my pretty girl. Yeah. Oh, yes, you are. I got the camera. Oops. There we go. Now you, I can see the whole bird. Okay. And now we just undo the tape. I find it's a little easier to pull the sock all the way down. So I bring her up to me. And I bring the sock all the way down. Make sure you keep control of those feet. You know, get over the feet. And uh, now she is uncast. And she is just ready to, to sit on my glove. Her beak is beautiful. Just exactly what we want. Now, when you do this, guys, it's one another little tip that you need to understand. Um, do not do this. Yeah, my baby. Don't do this when you're going, going hawking. Don't do this and say, oh, you know, you know I'm going to go hawking in an hour. So let me go ahead and get that beak coped down to where it needs to be. Don't do that because it's not pleasant for them. Uh, Bell is extremely forgiving. A lot of birds are not. So please don't do this just before because they can hold a grudge and they can say, well, you know, you were mean to me. So I am not go going to uh, cooperate with you at all. So give yourself a, give yourself a day or two. Um, if you have if you have a, a complete day off, that's wonderful. Uh, once you unhood them, uh, have them feed from your glove. Feed feed them uh, a little bit of breakfast or those kinds of things. Uh, you know, kind of soothe them and and let them know that they're an absolutely wonderful and they were such a good little patient. But uh, Can that's I zoom back in on the beak. Sure. As you can probably see, there's a big difference now. The beak is actually uh, virtually the same as it was when it was a brand new arrival here to my home. It's it's the right shape, the right length. And uh, she's good for another six months. So anyway, that's how we cope the beaks. It's not that hard. Um, a Dremel tool, a couple of files, uh, one that's finer, one that's a little more coarse. Uh, and these are, are fingernail files that you pick up at the uh, at uh, almost any store, from Walmart to the beauty uh, the beauty salon places. Um, you know, <coughs> this one has doggy prints on it. So this <coughs> this one is, we use for for trimming dog nails from our grooming shop, dog grooming shop. So you can get them anywhere. 
Belle, you were such a sweetheart. Let's go get you outside, shall we? All done. We're done. Thank you.